Right, how's it going guys? In today's video I'll be showing you a few ways to make your framer site feel more alive. Let's jump straight into it. So we'll be looking at this demo website that incorporates a lot of these techniques. First, you'll see there are these moving blurs. We have them in the background here. They're very subtle so you might not see. We have them here and we have this blur down here that's moving as well. So let me show you how I do this. Basically, essentially all that it is is looped animations. Here's the site with the blurs unblurred essentially. It's just a bunch of moving pictures. And the way we do this is with the looped animations. So let me show you real quick how I did it. You know what, let me create it from scratch. So we go here, we, cre we create a frame, right? Let's make it absolute, put it within this one. Let's make it a bit rectangular, rotate it a bit. And then all I do is add an effect loop now what you can do is hit the mirror uh, type, which basically means it goes back and forth. So once it finishes the movement, it reverses it. And then it reverses again. It just goes back and forth again and again. What I wanna do is rotate it by, let's say 40 degrees. Let's make the animation is in. I only do is in and not is in and out because it mirrors. So it will first is in and then when it mirrors back, it in reverse it will automatically ease out just because it reverses the easing in and now let's give it a bit of roundness and take a look it essentially moves back and forth and when we give it a blur so style filter blur and we bump that up and now it looks nice all right so i did the same thing here same concept for these and also here on the button, I did something interesting. I added a shadow within the circle and I also added a glow. And when you blur them, you'll see what I mean. You can see it looks like it has a shadow that's moving and it has a glow from behind that's also moving. Another cool thing I did with looping is this flare effect which you can see this highlight that goes across the image and across the text. I'll show it only on the text and it's the same for the image. So I have this, so essentially what I have is this rectangle that just goes across again with the looping animation. It's not mirrored because again, if I had it mirrored, then it will go and then we'll see it cycle back and we don't want that. So I set it on loop so that it goes only in one direction. And then I just add a blur and turn the blending mode to overlay. That way you only see it over the color text and not over the black background. And it makes it look like a highlight that goes across and it's a very fun effect that makes your website feel like it's alive, like it's actually in front of you. Oh, also here on the footer, we have this kind of bouncing animation, which is just, again, me changing the Y axis. And then I put it on mirror so that it goes up and down. Let me show you what it looks like if I put it on just loop. It will go up, then teleport back down and go up. I also animated the icons. This is very simple. This is just a rotation animation. This is a full rotation. So this is a 360 animation and this is like a 20 degree animation. And then this is just a scale animation and they're all mirrored to repeat themselves. Let me show you. So here you can see the loop. I just changed the rotation by 360 here. I did it by 20, so it goes 20, up, down, up, down, because it's mirrored. If we had it on loop, it would just teleport. You see, and it looks odd. And then here again, I just scaled it from one to 1.05, and it just grows and goes back, grows and goes back. Also here, I did the same with the arrow on the button. This is an instant when a normal animation works. I changed the offset on the X axis by 60. And what this does is ju it just moves the arrow sideways. But I do put this on loop and not on mirror because it goes and then it goes back. And we don't want that. We want it to just go, snap back to the original position, then go again, snap back, go again. So yeah, that's a cool trick. Second tip is hover animations. We have a few types of hover animations here. We have uh, one that moves up, one that scales up, and one that rotates. These all make the website feel more alive because when the user hovers over certain elements, it feels like they react to the movement. And 
you just select hover in effects and then here you have a bunch of parameters that you can change so we can scale it up we can change the opacity on hover we can rotate we can offset so either move right or left or move it up and down and let me just make a really wacky one so you can get an idea of what that looks like you see when i hover it does it and then we can also change the animation so let's say we want this to happen really slow we can increase the time here and we'll see it happens super slow so here i just scale it from 1 to 1.1 here i just move it on the y-axis by 10 and here this is interesting so the first one i rotate by 5 then the second one i rotate by minus 5 on hover and then the third one i rotate by 5 again when you kind of go over all of them it looks like they're alternating another animation that i have on these ones is a drag animation which is a very playful animation that you can add it only works in very certain scenarios like this one where you have a bunch of icons or a bunch of elements that you want the user to be able to move around freely and what they can do is basically just push the icons around and play with them you can also set the animation to snap back like here and then what it will do is it will always go back to the same place after the user drags it so these are a few cool animation tricks for you grain what i did is uh, i'll link it in the description there's a website called framer.supply which has a bunch of cool elements that you can't get just normally in framer you can paste them into your project and this element is essentially just it's just a grain element as you can see black and white grain it animates so you can see like an old tv and i just lower the opacity down here i put the blending mode on overlay i put it on top of everything in the layer section and then i change the pointer to none so what you want to do is go add style pointer events and put it on none because now if i have it on auto then it blocks everything behind it but if you have it on none then everything is passed through and you can still interact with the website um so yeah these are the tips i used here again we have a hover animation on the text here for the animation you'll see everything kind of goes one by one this is just a matter of timing the animations to have a delay so if i go here you'll see this is timed at 0.9 and then this is timed at 1 and then this is timed at 1.1 and 1.2 and 1.3 and it just kind of makes it look like a wave that goes up because they all go one after another so yeah i hope you enjoyed subscribe for more cool framer tips and i'll see you in the next one